Jean de Villiers, former captain of South Africa, 109 caps between 2002-2015. Went to a couple of World Cups, and I'm going to talk to you about this. Unfortunately for you, injured in both of those, but of course you got a medal as part of the squad in 2007. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Yeah, it's, it's a big pleasure. Uh, like I said earlier, it's um, yeah, it's a massive week in the in the rugby world, and, and certainly for um, the continuation of the rivalry between South Africa and New Zealand. Well, it doesn't get any better, does it? For us All Blacks fans, for us New Zealanders, for you South Africans, and especially somebody who so proudly wore the Springbok jersey for so long, is this the ultimate final for you? Is this is this the best final that we could have hoped for? Uh, it, it is. Um, you know, with, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, you you sometimes uh, get to a final and you and you hope and you and you wish that you might get a, you know, maybe weak opposition so that the task at hand could be easier. But um, but you know, if you when I was growing up, it was always you know South Africa versus the All Blacks. You know, two minutes to go. You know, can you score the points to win to win the game? And um, and the fact that these two teams have, have kind of dominated World Cups in terms of the times that they've won it, um, you know, just adds to the. Um, the occasion and 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 now it's uh, the battle of who gets to fall first. Two different ways of getting to the final, though, and I want to talk about this with you. For the All Blacks, we had a tough one, very tough against France. Another one against Ireland, and yeah, kind of a tough one against Argentina, but not really compared to what you've gone through. The Springboks have gone through. This will be your sixth really big game. How's that going to affect both teams? Yeah, look, uh, from a South African point of view, it's um, you know the team looked fatigued on the weekend, so I, I think all the conditions kind of suited England and played in their favour um, with the rain and, and everything. And, and, and I must say, our guys looked a little bit fatigued. And to be honest, I still don't know how we won that game. Um, so a, a bit of luck, I suppose, involved with that as well. Um, the reality of a of a World Cup final is that you know it, it's such a big occasion and that you, you get yourself up no, no matter what. Um, it's just uh, you know that that it it's it, it is what it is and 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 you you are able to lift yourself physically and mentally. Um, you know New Zealand on the other side, I think they've just become better and better the longer that the, the World Cup has gone on. So you know it'll be a challenge from a South African point of view. You have one day less in terms of uh, recovery as well. But uh, I can't see the team spending too much time out on the park this week. It's more just about the the mental preparation and and just getting the you know the game plan sorted and, and each player understanding what their roles would be on the weekend. Interesting you say that because I think for a lot of us observers, we you know we were using the words leg weary for the Springboks and 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 I don't know whether that's a physical thing, an emotional thing, or a mental thing, or a combination of all of those things given the fact that you only just got through against France and that was such a nail-biter too how much do those kind of games take their toll in a tournament like this yeah it, it does it does take its toll and I think we saw the effect of that on the weekend in the semi-final against England um, the reality of a World Cup final though is that you, you know you get the energy you get that that, that last bit of motivation from somewhere um, and, and you make it count for 80 minutes, you know, understanding that it's one more game, then you can go home, you can see your family, you can, you know, do whatever. And, and, and it's, um, it's just task at hand being able to perform for 80 minutes. So, so I think, you know, a, a semi-final versus a final, it is a little bit different and that the team will be able to, to get themselves up for one more go. Um, and, and it's also the, the reality of, of playing the All Blacks, um, it is one that we that we certainly appreciate and and hold dearly. Uh, it's a, a rivalry that that we uh, respect and 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 for that you need to be up for a game and 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 show that kind of respect for for eighty minutes when you play them. So so I've got no doubt that the box will be up for it. Um, certainly no no excuses post post World Cup if it doesn't go your way in terms of what happened previously. Jean de Villiers, former Springbok captain, 109 games for the box. He's on with us here on the platform. Just before we get on to the tactics, I want to talk about your substitutions as well. Because, you know, having Sia Khaleesi off so early, getting Pollard on so early in that in that semi-final, what is what is Rassi, Rassi's thinking, do you think, around this? Well, let me put it this way. I think they got it spot on. And okay. I don't think many coaches in world rugby would have been kind of ballsy enough to make calls like that so early on in the game. 
you know, I, th- I think what we already mentioned was the the fatigue of some of the players, and it and it showed on certainly on some of the guys that you've mentioned already. So, to take your fly off, off after 30 minutes, um, and then 100 Pollard putting up the, you know, kind of a man of the match performance post that, um, you know, Sia Kalisi going off early, Ibn Etzebet who normally plays 80 minutes for the box week in and week out, he got taken off after 50 minutes. Uh, Dwayne from Yellen, same thing, you know, so so big calls were made, but I think all of them um, kind of played uh, played out in a way that, that justified those decisions. So, um, you, you know, as coaches, you kind of get to know your players and you see body language, you see, you know, when, when a guy's off or not, and then you need to be able to make those calls. So it, it worked for the box on the weekend, and I, and I think uh, – yeah, you know, just from a coaching staff point of view, they they got a spot on. Significant also that the same twenty three has been stuck with and stuck with and stuck with. How important is that? Yeah, look, so so the the, the twenty three play two two weeks consecutively now. You know, there's been a, a couple of changes throughout uh, in the in the pool stages of the competition. Um, and, and in terms of actually minutes played per player, um, you know that was now a week or so ago. South Africa were actually pretty pretty low in game time game time per player. So um, uh, you know again we, we saw a fatigue team on the weekend, but I think again an, an extra week the final and what's at stake on the weekend. Um, you know the, the the fact that you do play together sometime or or more or have played together more. You know creates that. Um, Unity within within the squad that that you know that kind of sixth sense ability to know exactly what your teammates going to do. So so I think that'll that'll play uh, in our favour. In saying that, you know when you think when you think this management team will go for the same and do one thing, then they probably go and do the exact opposite thing. So we'll have to wait and see what team gets selected. Tactically, you know, all of us on this side of the microphone, and I suppose most observers as, as well, are looking at the Mount Smart game and then the Twickenham game and trying to figure out which game it's going to be and which side turns up. The All Blacks had the first win. Obviously, you to- totally dominated us in a record score in England. So what team is going to play out of the, out of the two teams? Yeah, the, it is very contrasting results and, and performances by both those teams. So I think the... The thing for me that'll that'll really determine it is that you know the, there's pressure in playing in a World Cup final in itself, um, but it's also how oh, you as an individual perform under pressure when when put under extreme pressure. And in the Man Smart game, I think right from the go, New Zealand started so well, and, and South Africa never had answers to everything that the All Blacks threw at them. So, um, contrastly, then in at, at Twickenham, you know we were able to do to do the same and really start well and, and apply pressure on the All Blacks. So um, I think the key players for both teams will, will it, it'll it'll come down to who handles the pressure best. Um, you know, you if you are put in that position, uh, are you able to, to take it all in and make the right decisions and execute? Or does it swing uh, in, in terms of the, the other team's favour? Um, uh, you know, that's, that's the reality of rugby. And, and I, can't, I can't see this game being dominated by one team. I think it'll be a close game and I think it's going to be a really good World Cup final. Tactically, how do you think the All Blacks will play and how will the Springboks play? Well, I think from an All Black point of view, you know, I was quite disappointed after the, the French game because I think they went away from their DNA. They, they played such a an all black like game and, and I think they they sorted it out post then post then and, and they've they've managed to find um you know the way that really suits them and that's ball in hand, playing attacking rugby, um seeing what's in front of them and, and, and executing but also a hard edge to it. You know, I think Sam Kane Kane has really come good in the last two weeks. So it's Richie Mwanga. I think the reintroduction of uh, Shannon Frizzell uh, and Jordi Barrett has been massive for the All Blacks and, and those will be key players. Uh, from a South African point of view, our whole game plan is based on, on set phases, trying to get momentum from there, trying to get penalties from that and, and, and having a, a platform for, from where you can attack. Um, I think this Bok team has, has evolved a little bit as well in that they've got the capability of, of really scoring good tries from, from turnovers. So for us, it'll be about uh, applying pressure from a defensive point of view, forcing the All Blacks into making mistakes. If they do do that, we can score tries. You know, if they can handle that defence and apply pressure back to us on our defence, then it might just swing the other way.
Jean de Villiers is with us on the platform. I've got a few more questions, if you don't mind. Is that all right? Yeah, all good. Is this Springbok side better than the one that won in 2019? Oh, good question. Um, look, the the reality is that it's it's pretty much uh, the 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 bulk of that team is still around. I do I ever feel that they have evolved and it's got more than to offer than um, than the team that played in 2019. So, to answer your question, yes, I think so. Um, and, and I think you know if they if they are able to to win this final, you know they will without any doubt go down as the the best um, uh, Springbok team, you know, just the consistency that they've shown and, um, you know, and, and they've shown in the last two weeks that, that they've got the ability to find something from somewhere to win games and they're definitely going to need it this weekend. Are these two teams in the final the best two teams that, that could have made the final or are, they, or, or are they the two best teams that have played the tournament the best? Yeah, look, I'd, I'd love to say that they are the best two teams, and and it's debatable, you know. Um, it's, but it, there's no doubt that Ireland and France uh, were very good in this competition as well. Um, but it's about it's about being able to play the World Cup, play the conditions, and win the games that matter. And the All Blacks and the Springboks were able to do that. So, um, you know, it's it's kind of a yes and no answer. Um, you know, uh, all four of those teams, I think, were quality. And, and again, you know, and I've emphasised it so many times on TV, I think just uh, the draw and what, what that created, that the one side was lopsided, that's just a pity because we should have seen those quarterfinals being played as semifinals. Yes, yes, we should have. You know, one of the things that all us All Black fans get paranoid about, and certainly in our media we yell and scream about it, John, is the fact that the Springboks, we accuse you of slowing the game down, of sitting down, of doing injuries, of water breaks. How do you respond to that? Yeah, well, I mean, we've got a lot. Don't have enough time. So... Um, and, and it's just a joke again for for the listeners. Um, but but look, it is it is what it is. You know, you you play the conditions, you you play within the rules of the game, and you and you do whatever um, whatever you do uh, or whatever is best for your team. Um, you know, I, I think in terms of the box and how they've played the last couple of weeks, it's actually been the other way around where we try to speed up the game, quick throw-ins, you know, setting the line up quickly, playing quickly. So there is a, you know, there is a change in terms of the mindset of the box. Um, but we all know that that the All Blacks are pretty good when they when they lift the pace of the game. How do you think Wayne Barnes will referee this game? Well, in terms of, you know, the the magnitude of the game, he's he's the guy with the biggest responsibility. Pre-game, you know, I made a call and said that um, probably the the most important team in this World Cup or the team that will have the biggest influence would be the refereeing team. And I think we've seen that already in this competition. And I'm just hoping that that the result of this final won't be determined on a call that goes one way or the other, Uh, you know, that that he keeps a clear head. Uh, Look, he's very experienced. um, And and I'm just hoping that he's not the not the, the focal point of the game and the person that everybody talks about rather than the spectacle that you're hoping to see. If you've been reading about Bongi and the accusation about uh, racial abuse that World Rugby are investigating, how do you think that's going to turn out? The explanations that I've read sound as though what he said was in Afrikaans and maybe we don't understand in the actual, actual fact what he was saying. Is that is that how you see it? Yeah, look, uh, uh, I mean, you know, if, if if I should be speaking Afrikaans here, I think you'll be you'll be thinking I'm I'm saying things to you t- totally different to what I am saying. But what I've learned from these um, judicial systems and the decision being made, you basically have no clue what's going to happen. So uh, you know, I've got no idea. Okay. Um, it it can it can really go either way. Um. You know, you got to treat it with with merit and and look into it. But um, yeah, um, with decisions being made, you know, with these with these panels previously, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out. So yeah, not not too much of an opinion on that really. Another another, I suppose, falsehood that we believe here or we don't quite understand is how much control does head coach Yak Ninaba have over the team, and how much control does Rassi have, and is it still Rassi's team? Yeah, look, uh, John Ninobe is a is a head coach, and and Rassi Rasmus is the director of rugby, and and each has a, a role to fulfil. 
Um, Jacques is definitely the guy on the field that, that uh, takes the team through their paces. And I think collectively they are able to um, to make good decisions, you know. I think that's been the the, the benefit of this team and, and, the, and the, their success has been the ability to to really take the information from everyone and then make decisions accordingly or the best decisions. You know, you throw in a Felix Jones there as well who came over from Ireland and he's added so much um, value to the team as well and all the other assistant coaches. So so I think that the way that they work together as a team and, and Jock and Rassi has worked together for close to 20 years now, you know, they understand each other so well and they basically – basically think the same as well. So it's very much a collaborative effort. A personal question here. How did you cope with being injured so early in both the 07 and 15 tournaments, especially when you're the captain, and I know how much pride you had in that jersey. When you've sat back and thought about it over the years, how have you looked at it? Have you thought, hey, it's just rugby, I'm unlucky? Did you go through various different emotions for it? Please explain that. Yeah, I mean, look... I actually I got selected in 2003 for the World Cup, um, got injured our last warm-up game before we left for Australia. Um, you know, 07 got injured the first first game against Samoa. In 2011, I actually got injured the first game as well against Wales, but luckily stayed on and played in the quarter-final. And then in 2015, you know, second game around against Samoa, broke my jaw, and following day um, retired from international rugby. So. So look, when you speak about World Cups, I've had massive disappointment, but I, I still believe to this day that, um, you know, I was fortunate to still play 109 times for my country, and, and unfortunately, World Cups just didn't go my way. Uh, I've got a gold medal here at home, um, which I'm extremely proud of. W- would have wanted to contribute more in that competition, but it's the way that it panned out, and, and still just fortunate for the opportunities that I got. It doesn't get any better, does it? As we said right at the beginning of this, so just finally, here we go. South Africa versus New Zealand. Whoever wins uh, has four titles, which is one more than the other after as much history as we've had. Wow. It's us against you lot, John. Well, there we go. You could not have asked for more. I'm, I'm extremely proud of our box, and I'm so delighted that we're playing the All Blacks. It's going to be huge. I'm fortunate to, to be able to be there on Saturday, and um, and hopefully the best team in green wins. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that for us and being so generous with your time. Cheers, guys. Devlin. You've got to love sports. The platform.